Hello. Um, I did a radio show the other day and I did a TV show last night. And I've got a couple speaking engagements coming up this month. And I realized that much of the shows I've done dealt with leadership for yourself, your own personal leadership, recognizing that your life is going to go where you choose to take it. That there's no victim here. It's looking at where do you want to go with your life? What's your dream? What's your vision? And how are you going to make it happen? But tonight, watching the news on television, it really made me think, this is another whole type of leadership that I'll be speaking about later in the month. But this is another whole expression of leadership that really needs to be looked at, because it, it just amazes me. We have two people running for the presidency, and whatever party you're in, that's irrelevant. We've got two people running. And when you look at it, neither of them really has higher than a 30% rating in terms of trustworthiness, in terms of integrity, in terms of transparency, in terms of qualities that for many of us would be the qualities that we would want to define who we are. Because being a leader, it, one thing it's looking at what you want to do with your life, your why. Why do you want to be a leader? What is, what is the purpose for you? What is it that you hope to achieve? And then secondly, who do you want to be as a leader? What do you want that to look like for you? What are the values that govern your life, that govern how you're leading, that govern what it is you want to lead? What are your core values? Because those really reflect the type of followers you will have. They reflect the amount of followers you will have. People want somebody who they can trust, who they can respect, who is transparent with them, who is really present with them. And in looking at that and in not getting discouraged, recognizing there's a reason for everything and life goes the way it goes, it really made me think of a book I finished the other day. All of this goes around and around because my world for the past God knows how many years has been really about helping people on their leadership. So looking at the speaking engagements I've done, the TV and radio shows I did recently, and now looking at the news and leadership. For myself, whenever I'm busy like that, whenever I'm running, I spend time, I sit, I meditate, and I read. And having just finished this book called Nine and Counting, written by the women of the Senate, it really was something that showed me clearly this is another whole way to lead that a group of women have chosen. They're Democrats, they're Republicans, and who knows in time they may be of a third party, but they're all in the Senate. And what happens is that, if you remember, when our government was shut down, it was the woman who finally said, we don't want to win, we want resolution. Leadership for us is not about winning, our party winning or that party winning. It's about a resolution of difficulties we're having in the country that support the people, that support the people who count on us to be leaders. And within two days when they made this really active concerted effort to find resolution not to win, our government was back on track. And amazingly what they did as they were writing this book they got together and, and created a list of nine things, these nine women, of nine things that they would most recommend that we look at in terms of leadership. And a backdrop I'd like to put in for a moment is that these nine women, rather than having the battle between the parties as our two leaders are doing now for the presidency, they are there just in service, not in battle. And they've made a commitment that they will never run against each other. That they will never go against and try to destroy each other. They are there to build each other up. So that every week they get together, not as Democrats or Republicans, but just as women in the Senate, to look at sharing their lives, sharing their families, talking about stories of what's going on in their personal lives, but also things they believe in and what they want to help make this country a better place. And they just talk as women, not as party members. What an amazing gift to know that as leaders, we have people who work simply to serve. 
because truly the first shall be last and leadership is all about service. But the nine points they put together that feed them that as a team, that feed them as individuals, and that they gave to us in this book to look at effective leadership. Looking at from the very beginning, because each of these women, as you can imagine, were told they can't be in the Senate, the women that they can't be in the House, that they couldn't be representatives in, in their state because they were women. But what they said and the first thing they talk about is when someone says, why you? The first thing you need to think about as a leader or an aspiring leader is why not me? Why not me as a leader? Why not me as the voice of the people? Why not me as somebody who represents the very best? Why not me? What a question to ask yourself. Why not me? If it's something you want, a leadership of people of a company within an organization or your own life, why not you taking charge and making that happen? The second point they bring up, remember who you are and where you come from. Don't ever get caught up in the theoretical celebrity of leadership because the people who make you at any given moment can attempt to break you. It isn't about that. Remember who you are, remember where you come from, and most importantly, you will stay an authentic leader. Being who you truly are, who you've always been, brings the authenticity into your leadership, and that's how people trust you, because you are completely authentic. Third point, create a team effort. None of us can succeed alone. None of us will be highly effective leaders out there by ourselves. We need a team, whether now it's a team of networkers that you work with, a mastermind group, which is why I formed the mastermind group I have to, to support women in a team environment with me as a facilitator. To do that, to claim it, to go for it, to have somebody say, wait a minute, when you're feeling down and discouraged, you can do it, go for it. Number four, don't take it personally. When people are against you as you're stepping into the leadership, know that when they try to discourage you from doing so, the only ones that discourage you from following your dream, from claiming your leadership, are the folks who haven't lived their dream yet, who haven't claimed their leadership yet. Those who followed their dreams, those who've claimed your leadership, will always be the first ones there to help you out. So don't take anything personally. And don't make it a personal vendetta. Then you've lost the bigger vision. You're stuck in petty detail. Number five, identify your felt need. And for these women, what they put, it isn't to be a politician. If the need is simply to be a politician, that says nothing about either of them or any of them. Why do you want to do this? They wanted to do this to make a difference. Why do you want to be a leader? What is that about for you? Never forget your why. If you do, you're out there empty. You need to have all of you, which is why you are here on this planet, why you want to be a leader and the kind of leader you want to be. All right, number six, respect your losses. All of us have risen, all of us have fallen. All of us have had successors and we've all had failures. That's life, it's not important. You learn from both, you learn from the wins and you learn from the losses. Number seven, control your agenda. Look at things reasonably. How much can you accomplish in a week? How much can you accomplish in a day? Folks who set themselves up with a to-do list that has 87 things and they want them all done by midnight, you have failed before you started. Control the agenda for the day. Control your agenda for the week. Never limit your vision. Never live, limit the type of leadership you want and what you want to accomplish. But be realistic. If most people can do five and you're truly a leader, you probably end up doing eight things in any given day. But make it realistic so you don't go to bed at night feeling like a failure. Number eight, ignore the babble. There will always be people talking out there, people who know you don't belong, people who think you're getting too big for your britches, which is an expression we used to use in the projects a thousand years ago, getting too big for your britches. People will always be out there. Ignore the babble. Keep your eyes focused on what your why is, what you want to achieve, and where you want to go. And nine, pass it on. An effective leader trains leaders. If you have your own company or you're working in a corporation, you know the most effective team has the main leader creating leadership in everybody around them.
If you can get a team together where everybody owns the leadership, everybody takes responsibility for their lives and for the team's objective, the team's vision, you're rolling. So a quick closing here. We need personal leadership for ourselves. But if you are a leader, whether that's politically in a corporation within your own entrepreneurial organization or in a nonprofit you volunteer for, if you're a leader, remember when anybody asks why you, the answer is why not me. Remember where you came from. It keeps you authentic and humble. Create a team effort because the team is what makes things happen. Don't take anything personally. It's there. It's not about you. People who truly are present don't have time to talk about others. They're there. And, and it isn't about you. It's about what they haven't achieved yet. Identify your felt need. Don't ever forget why you're doing what you're doing. It's so important. It keeps you focused and keeps you from getting scattered. Respect your losses. None of us are going to succeed at everything all the time. And it causes you also not to blame anybody. Seven, control the agenda, make it reasonable, achieve what anybody can, and maybe a bit more if you're somebody who's really out there and a go-getter. Again, ignore the babble, all the words, all the noise about how impossible it is. Everything is impossible until it's possible. And nine, pass it on. Train all those you come in contact with. If you're an effective leader, reach back, bring everybody up with you, because we're all in this together. Thanks so very much.